take one word from your vocal, loop it and add some effects and you can get this kind of cool ambient sound. White noise and saturation are the holy grail combo to make synths more full. Make your own instrument from a sample you like. Automating the BPM in the track can actually sound cool. At the second part of your drop, test only turning the lead up or down an octave to give the listener a fresh take on your drop. Adding some percussion hits to the rhythm of your song can really help emphasize it. To get a more realistic piano, turn down the velocity, then randomize it. You can also make the strumming less tight and in turn it becomes more realistic as well. Lastly, you could of course record yourself playing the piano for a maximum. Add crowd noise in the background of the drop to add energy. Or add an alarm. Is it okay to use OTT on the master? Of course it is. If it sounds good, add it. But is it okay to add reverb to the master? The people are retarded. For real though, it's actually a technique that can be used to glue things together, but obviously don't overdo it. For vocals, balance the volume with volume automation first, then add a compressor for the most natural and balanced vocal. When you pick a key, make sure you can clearly hear every sub bass note. If your sub ends up too low, you lose all power. If it's too high, you lose all power. So move the key of your song to the best area for your sub. Usually it's between E and G. Cutting risers and downlifters to around 500 Hz usually cleans up the mix a lot. If you want to be successful in music, be the hardest worker in the room. And when you don't feel like working, just watch some uh, David Goggins. Why am I being a bitch sometimes? Next time you're side chaining with an LFO, carve out the perfect shape of your cake for the best sub and bass side chain. Listen to all your favorite songs and write down what you like the most. Could you combine or twist up the genres you like in a way to create your own unique style? Many producers don't realize you can also reverse kicks and toms, for example, which can sound really cool. Reversing entire melodies or sounds can sound interesting. Add saturation to a sub bass or bass to make it more audible on low quality speakers like laptops. One trick I love to do is to automate tons of reverb on the vocals in the build up and on the phrase right before the drop, I make it almost completely dry. Add a copy of your vocal, but make it one octave down. This can help make your vocal sound more full. A popular technique to add variation with snares is to add a different snare every other hit. When cutting vocal chops, look for vowels like A ah and E because they tend to sound better chopped. Listen to your master in mono to find facing issues. Always make the drums extra loud before mastering because the limiting during mastering will turn down transient heavy instruments more than other instruments. Use mid-side EQ when mastering to cut out unnecessary lows around 100 Hz for a cleaner master. To reach a really loud master, a pro trick is to add saturation since it adds a lot of perceived loudness. Here is a voice done with and without RX Elements audio repair. Here is a voice done with and without RX Elements audio repair. One way to add punch to a sound is to just add a quick transient hit from a sound as a layer, like this. <laughs> to make your reverb more rhythmically interesting, try adding a lot of pre delay, like disclosure. Use triplets to surprise and engage the listener. Test audio training apps if you struggle to identify frequency issues in your mix. And you can also use apps to do ear pitch training if you struggle to write down melodies that you're humming. Never automate the mixer channel's volume, instead add a volume plugin to automate the volume, so the automation doesn't fuck you up later when you're trying to mix the track with the mixer. If you're new to music production, don't spend any money on expensive plugins, you can still make professional music with only stock plugins. Take breaks, ear fatigue is a thing. Add the rim shot layer to a snare, then add a filter and tons of reverb and you'll get a classic future bass verse type snare. 
Automating the pitch to slowly go up or down on an instrument can give it some extra tension. Learn FM synthesis to create cool metallic sounds or insane dubstep sounds. When you consider your track finished, take a break for like 2-3 days and if you still like the song after that break, it's probably a freaking great song, so release it. Don't forget to tune your toms. The reason for this is because I think they have more tonal qualities than a kick, for example. Consider trying out completely different scales, like these non-western scales, for example. Add slides to your instruments. Unpopular opinion, but I actually think MIDI chord packs can be great to use as a starting point. Learning to properly cut out high-end frequencies of sounds like the bass, chords, etc. can dramatically make your mix cleaner. Use your default plugin settings, so every time you open your EQ, you will have all these bands ready to use quickly. Automations are amazing at bringing your sounds to life. For example, you can add automations for a filter, a tape stop, the pitch, and a reverb. You can use this website to export a cappella of whatever song you like. Or you could use Vocal Remover for free. If you want to do a remix and are not sure about the chords, you can check them out on Chordify.net. Add brass tabs to add impact. Removing a lot of sounds that you drop can make it sound more interesting. And adding something as simple as a crash and an exhaust can add a lot of impact. You can actually create different arrangements by clicking here in case you want to try a bunch of different ideas. You can also copy the state of an automation to another one to save time. The way I like to organize my automations is by grouping my automations with a pattern or sound I'm automating. And I also set a lock on them so the automations doesn't get disabled when I want to solo instruments. And yeah, that's 69 tips. Also, if you want to learn everything you need to produce electronic music, you can check out my 7-day course. Link in the description.